Hi. Hi, it's Tony Bellamy. Uh, glad to see you guys here. This is another Just Coolin' Podcast. Um, Just Coolin' Podcast. Uh, we, last show we did, we did um, um, incredible Betty Davis. Uh, we are seen on Podbean, Spotify, and Google, just, just to name a few. Um, today's show is going to be rather interesting. I'm going to talk about something in New York City that I found out that I didn't even know. And I'm going to speak about the two palladiums, okay? And what the, that palladium will mean to you and what that other palladium will mean to you, okay? And the first palladium we'll speak about was, you know, they were both places to have a good time, dance hall, place parties. The Palladium Ballroom, located at 1098 Broadway between 52nd and 53rd, um, opened up in 1946, okay? 1946. And it was known as a place where uh, Latin music was created, uh, particularly the mambo, mambo style music uh, that was connected to rumba in Cuba. Okay, now um, the this Latin music was created by the you know the great uh, three three bands in particular that were known, uh, the Mambo Kings, Tito Puente, Tito Rodriguez, and Machito, uh, were the guys who developed uh, this uh, incredible music uh, that was known. Uh, at 1098 Broadway between 52nd and 53rd Street, okay? And um, that, you know, the clubs, the, these musicians were, um, uh, you know, during 1946 through, 1948 to, through the 1950s, had hit, had to hit going up there. You may have heard the Mambo Number no. 5, Picadillo, uh, um, uh, Rock Can Can, I'll give you an idea, Asian Minor by Machito. You know, you may have heard that, okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, that that was happening, okay. So there was hit after hit after hit. Now, besides that, I'm just giving you a background. I'm not, you know, quick, quick overview. Um, it was the dancers that really made this place, okay. And the dancers that came there to, to party and have a great time uh, were incredible dancers, okay. They danced, they had uh, uh, styles that they created, um, you know, mambo, they had the um, cha cha cha, pachanga, and merengue uh, that were all uh, um, danced uh, up there with dance contests, leg contests, you know, couples uh, going at it. Um, and, 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 you know, and then you've got these incredible bands going at the same time, man, you know, so the place was rocking. There would be clubs, there would be lines of people trying to get in uh, to the, uh, um, into uh, the Palladium Ballroom, okay? Now, the Palladium Ballroom was also a place located between 52nd and 53rd. It's right Next to the jazz capital of the world, okay, you had Birdland up there. You had uh, Kubop City, and uh, well, you know Kubop City was up there. Um, um, there was oh Club Onyx, Club Onyx. All this is going on right there. So you would have jazz musicians that would sit in with with the bands, okay, and uh, you had celebrities. Uh, you had you you had Frank Sinatra. Ella Fitzgerald, Count Basie, Duke Ellington, uh, Billie Holiday, um, um, Dean Martin, uh, all wanted to get in this place. And I'm just giving you a few of the guys. And then there was Marlon Brando, who s somehow thought he was a musician and would sit in with the band, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, you know, just do his thing playing uh, uh, congas and, and, you know, in the bongos and sitting in there with the band. That that must have been a trip in itself. Now, you know, had all these people, everybody wanted to be there uh, to, to get into the club. There was even movies done, 1992, The Mambo Kings. Uh, they, did a, they did a movie about it, okay? So um, that's the Palladium Ballroom. Okay, that was going on from 1946 all the way up to 1966. Had a run, okay, because Mambo was starting to wane out. Now that's the Palladium Ballroom. Now the other Palladium, there was a place on 14th Street called the Academy of Music. Okay, and the Academy of Music was a, a, a was a movie theater. It was a, a playhouse, and um, you know, concert hall. Okay, in 1976. It was renamed the Palladium. Hmm. So when I thought of the Palladium, my mother would say the Palladium. I thought she was talking about that, the that play, 
No, she was not talking about that palladium. In 1976, this palladium was converted into a concert hall. And you, uh, as we would say, all the heads were there, man. And so you would go and check out uh, um, Return to Forever, Chick Corea, uh, Stanley Claude, Lenny White, Al Demiola. Then you have Weather Report. And, you know, um, matter of fact, uh, Weather Report's Wayne Shorter wrote uh, a tune called The Palladium for the Palladium Ballroom thinking that I was thinking Palladium on 14th Street. No. And this, when I saw the weather report, it was with Jaco Pistorius for the first time, Peter Erskine, all right? And John Ponte, WRVR, uh, was the place that uh, gave us the information uh, about when those concerts, or you had the Village Voice, okay? So I was there on that scene, many a conscious and unconscious night, so many clouds. You can take that different ways, <clears throat> Okay. In 1985, though, Peter Gatine takes over the place. And with the Japanese architect, it becomes and converts into the Palladium Nightclub. Okay, so during this time, the Palladium Nightclub, there were so many clubs in New York City. All right. You had, um, you, you, you had, um, ooh, ooh, try, you, you, you had. Studio 54, you had Limelight, you you had uh, The Roxy, you had Bentley's, um, uh, you, you know, um, oh man, I'm just, it's, I'm, I'm trying to, to name all of them, um, um, Tribeca's, okay, you have Webster Hall, um, I know I'm, I'm escaping some of you, you know, but there was a, there was a lot of clubs during this time, all the way up through the mid 90s, in 1995 though, the Palladium closed. It was bought by NYU. New York University bought the place and it was converted to a dormitory. Okay. And it was named, what, guess what it was named? It was named the Palladium. Okay. And, um, you know, the Palladium. Huh? Who could figure? Okay. The two Palladiums. That was happening, okay? So, you know, anytime you hear New York City, you might hear people say, you know, you say the Palladium to them. The Palladium is on the 14th Street. Okay, that's that's the place they knew. Then you have another generation who's the Palladium Ballroom. So you just found out something else, okay? But I want to end this show by speaking about something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, and I'm talking about um, I always heard the conversation, you know, you heard about the late 19, late 1960s, um, um, early 70s, that jazz died, okay, and that um, all the, there was a lost generation. I, I, I heard that all the time. And I said, wow, you know, what happened? So, but what was happening was that a lot, many jazz musicians were going into a new music that they were, uh, that was had been there all the time. Uh, it was uh, one time known as black music, uh, popular music, race music. And finally, in the late 1940s, it was changed to rhythm and blues, R&B. The stepchild of jazz, um, always here, but never recognized. Uh, Cab Calloway was one of the leaders of this music that had many jazz musicians in there with singing, dancing, rapping. And, and you know, you, you, you talk about R&B and many jazz musicians will, you know, frown that <clears throat> that wasn't jazz. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> okay. And uh, many of those young jazz musicians in the late 1960s, 1970s got into forming new groups such as Earth, Wind & Fire, Cool and the Gang, Ohio Players, uh, jazz musicians moving into a new groove at the Master of Groove, Roy Ayers, were uh, all part of this change of, of music. But many in the jazz world uh, weren't recognizing R&B. Okay, they didn't re mm, no 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 no. no. <laughs> they didn't recognize R and B as being jazz, but it was okay. All right, and um, <clears throat> uh, there were many jazz musicians that were going into composing music, uh, becoming new bands. MFSB, Mother, Father, Sister, Brother, Sounds of Philadelphia, um, you know, Isaac Hayes, writing for Isaac Hayes, Marvin Gaye. Uh, many things were going on that. The 
jazz, this new groove of R&B, this new black music that was discovered. That had been here since the 1940s, man, <laughs> you know, but it wasn't recognized. All right. And um, there were many jazz musicians that also um, influenced hip hop. All right. And, you know, you, you talk about somebody like uh, Ronnie Foster, OK, who influenced um, um, Tribe Called Quest with electric relaxation. OK. All right. If you heard that cut, it was uh, Mystic View, Mystic Brew. OK. And thank thank goodness for the DJs. All right. Like uh, DJ Premier, um, um, Pete Rock. All right. Uh, the Tribe Called Quest is in, in, in so many DJs that took the samples and recognize this jazz of R&B that was taken out and, and, and became into part of hip hop, okay? And um, it's, like I said, jazz sometimes didn't recognize themselves. They are the Democrat. You know, jazz world is like the Democrats, you know, dominant, <laughs> but they hate themselves. <laughs> so I, I, you know, some of you are gonna argue about that. I don't care. But when you got a music that's been here since the 1940s, man, mm, you know, this is not an argument. Okay. This is a fact. Okay. And what I want to wrap this up by saying this, um, some artists, you know, are looking for the light to be recognized. Okay. They, they need somebody to tell them that that's the new way. That's the new way. Instead of creating and just moving on with it, uh, they are looking um, well, well, for them, there is an absence of light, an absence of light. And that came from some artists that I saw at an HBO, HBO um, um, documentary called Absence of Light. And that's what's going on with jazz world not recognizing R&B. Jazz continued, but it was just in a new flow. OK. And, and you know, Donald Byrd uh, and the Blackbirds. Remember those guys? OK. We don't recognize our own music, all right. And um, I, I, that's that's my say about that. I, I just I, I just had a thing, and I and I really realized the connections that we don't connect ourselves. And I I I, I will just say that you know there was an absence of light uh, that we create, and the light is with us. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the show about the two two uh, palladiums and also R and B and jazz. Okay, it's been real. You've been most regular till the next time on Podbean and in Spotify. You can find us. Have a great day. Bye.